explain how like a play calling processes work? Like as far as you know, Brian says you're the one calling them during practice, but just like the process to get to that point in the meetings and then onto the field. Yeah, it's been really collaborative. Um, you know, as far as between myself and the staff, the offensive staff and Dave's working together on, you know, what we want our players to do, what we want to do in the run game, the pass game, movement, screens, play action. I mean, it's been really cool that way and um, really collaborative and, and fun. Do you feel like you Thursday is a little bit of a tryout for that? Say that again? Do you feel like Thursday in the preseason is a little bit of a tryout for you? You know, I, I look at it as an opportunity, right? An opportunity for not only myself, but for the players. You know, those guys are, you know, everyone on there is working hard to, to make the team, right? And, and show what they can do and show that they can build themselves a role. So, um, you know, I'm looking to go out there, do my job to the best of my ability, put the guys in the best position to be successful and show what they can do. That's what have you learned about it from, what have you learned about play calling from the, you know, camp this summer? Mm -hmm. I assume it's the, like, the, the most you've called plays or the yeah. longest you have? Yeah, no, it's, there's been a great learning experiences between the amount of situations we call in practice. And Dave's does a great job of mixing those type of things in throughout practice, um, whether it be in the red zone, two minute, backed up, short yardage. Um, he just, we've thrown so many situations at not only just the coaches and play callers, but also at the players. And I'm really proud of how they've responded to those things. How much of being a former quarterback is just like being an offensive coordinator? Yeah, I definitely think there's, you know, there's definitely some some feel to it. You got there's some correlation because you, as the quarterback, you, you're playing the game kind of the same way through the eyes of the coordinator, and you got to understand what his intent is as a play caller and why he's calling a certain play. And um, I think that helps as as you get more familiar with the play caller and the quarterback. When they once they get on the same page, I think that's where you really see things that are special. Mike, what has the biggest adjustment been play calling wise for you? I mean, having never yeah. done it, and obviously you haven't done it in the game yet. Yeah. But like just running through the spring and summer, what's been the biggest yeah. uh, adjustment? It's been fun. The, the, I think the biggest thing right now is just the the coach, the quarterback, communicator. Yeah. I think that's um, that's that's probably one of the biggest things that we've we've talked about. And make sure I get to them get them to play fast, um, clearly. You know, sometimes I get excited and amped up on the, on the and I'm, you know, might be a little bit too too high with my volume, but um, I think that's probably been the, the biggest thing right now. Does he say that? Is he like too, too loud? Huh? <laughs> no, I, I'm probably just screaming it too fast uh -huh. and then all of a sudden, you know, it just it kind of comes out a little muddled, so oh, I I'm working on it. Mike, is there a little bit of a dichotomy, what Tom was just saying about like, it's kind of an audition for you as a play caller and you say take every opportunity, but we know preseason football, the goal is to be like as vanilla as possible and not show anything. So how do you impress while not giving away too much? Yeah, there's there's a balance. And I, you know, I think, you know, Dave would, you know, following Dave's philosophy on what he wants to do on offense um, and put our guys in a good position to go make plays and, and show what they can do. And, you know, we're going to follow that. And I think that's that's been the plan all along. Like how much of your job right now is, how much time do you spend wondering what Brian wants called? Mm -hmm. And then how much of you is saying, no, I'm my own coach, it's it's what I want. And mm -hmm. is he giving you that freedom to navigate that? Yeah, we, we talk all the time about those type of things and how we want to run plays. But in, when we're in a training camp mode, it's evaluation. You're evaluating the players, you're evaluate, evaluating the scheme. So, you know, there's, there's a balance of that. But again, me and Dave talk all the time about how we want to attack certain defenses, how we want to attack certain teams, how we want to use our players. So that's been an open conversation since the day I got here. Mike, Mike as far as that open conversation, you mm -hmm. go back a couple months when you guys started putting the, yeah. the offense together, and Dave's told us the idea that, you know, I want it to be a collaborative idea. Mm -hmm. So for you, what was your, that experience like pulling from your knowledge when yeah. you have a guy who's already had a successful system? <clears throat> Yeah. And you guys putting things in that maybe you've done in the past that you yeah. didn't do. It was super exciting. I think, you know, Davis has been around for a long time, um, 20 years, 20 plus years in the league. So to be able to pull from his experiences, pull from the experiences and where I was from, that's been that's been awesome. So there's there's multiple ways um, to do, run certain schemes. There's multiple ways to teach it uh, certain schemes, certain ways. So. You know, we're we're mixing, we're kind of mixing and matching on certain on certain ideas, but that's been the fun part, right? Because we're figuring it out, we're trying to solve problems and make make sure all our issues are covered. And um, you know, I love the conversations we've had with our staff and with Dave's. Can you give an example of something that's different that you've had to adjust to? Again, Can you give an example of like something that you know you maybe did one way? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail, but in the protection game, you know, there's certain things that we've that I've done in the past, and certain things that they've done in their past that. We've melt, melt together and you know made it make sense for the quarterback. Because at the end of the day, 
if as long as him and the O-line are on the same page, I think we'll be fine. So there's there's definitely a lot of communication between the guys who have ideas and then the like the actual execution of it and making sure it's simple and clear and has a rules that can cover a wide spectrum of fronts and coverages and, and pressures. So, you know, you try to cover all your bases, but also make it simple and also make it beneficial to our players. Mike, after seven months, do you know what you have or will the preseason, what happens on the field, show you what you have? And yeah. I, I, think, I think every day you're going to evaluate, I mean, throughout the entire season. And today's no different. Um, when we get into the preseason game, it, it amps up another level, and you're playing against you know not the same guys that you've been seeing for the last few months. So it's definitely a different level of intensity. We've got an away game coming up, um, so you know the, all those things are going to be be new for some of our young guys and some of the guys introduced into the offense. And so I think that's going to be a, a good challenge for us, right? right. We'll, we'll we'll have some opportunity Coach, to look at that. Coach, how's Daniel progressing? I mean, it, this is a whole new offense for him. Yeah. Receivers talked about some freedom routes, choice depending on defenses. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that takes a lot of <clears throat> excuse me communication with the quarterback Daniel. How is he progressing up to this point as far as communication wise with his receivers? You know, I think over the last probably week to ten days, I think that communication really has uh, gotten a lot better in the meeting rooms. Those guys are being more vocal, not only just the quarterbacks but the receivers, making sure that hey, Daniel, okay, if it's if I saw it this way, and then vice versa, right? Daniel saying hey, I'm, I think you should hit it like this or show me this body language. So I think over the last week, week and a half, things have really gotten a lot better because, you know, they're opening up their lines of communication. And that's what we're, that's what we're stressing to these guys. Let's talk. It's not just the receivers and quarterbacks, but O-line. Like, everyone's got to get on the same page. How's he doing overall? Because, you know, we see, you know, incomplete passes. We yeah. say, okay, he missed that throw. Yeah. Maybe it might not be that. It might, it might be that at times, I'm sure. So how do you assess what you've seen from him in regards to performance? Yeah, I think Daniel's doing a phenomenal job. You know, he's, he's working, he's operating the offense. Um, I like what he's doing as far as being a leader and trying to get these guys up and push the tempo of the offense. So um, I like where Daniel's at. Mike, when, when you deal with um, Wandale and Evan, mm -hmm. uh, two guys who are rookies who are obviously going to play a big role, um, do you have to constantly look at them as rookies or they may be maybe a little more advanced where you can give them maybe a little more because they are going to be you know, guys you're going to use. There's definitely a balance. You definitely want to be careful with the young guys, but we're, we're, we're still going to continue to run our offense and, you know, put them in position so that they, they can be successful. But, you know, you got to have a balance and understand that, yeah, they don't have a lot of ball as a professional player. So we try and make sure we spend extra time with them in the meeting room, spend extra time with them on the field and, and show them certain looks on tape. So you kind of go through that learning process and that learning progression with those guys and understand like, okay, they haven't seen everything yet, but you can slowly build their library over time. Are they a little more developed as rookies than maybe some rookies? I think they're right on schedule. I think they're right on schedule. Mike, Mike, where, are you guys, guys, where are you guys? You talk about evaluating, you talk about melding different yeah. offensive systems. Yeah. Where are you guys in terms of putting together the offense that you want to have? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say this again. I, I think we're right on schedule. I think we're right where we want to be. Um, I think we're still continuing to figure out some schemes that we're, you know, better at and then things we need to get, get work on, whether it's run or pass game. So I say we right on schedule. I like where our guys are at. We've got to put together a good day of work today and then, you know, we'll continue to move forward. When you, guys, three more, when you guys drafted Wandale, there was some outside thought analysts, media fans. Is he too similar to Kadarius now that you've had them? How different are they? How co yeah. how confident are you? You can play them both on the field at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not big on comparisons, but I think they both have a unique skill set on the perimeter in space. I think that's where they're the most dynamic. So, um, I think that you know those guys have done a good job again trying to learn the offense where they fit in the scheme, and I think the coaches are doing a, a good job too of trying to figure out how they fit into our offense and where they fit. And that's that's super important, right? As we as we keep on going, moving forward. Sorry, Mike. When when, when did sorry, first day? Maybe the last. When when did you um, when did the light go off for you in terms of coaching, and having had the experience of working with Andy Reid for a long time, how fortunate do you feel that you have been able to kind of learn at the feet of a, of the yeah. master like that? The light the light really went off for me when I was a graduate assistant at Northwestern. Um, as soon as I got finished playing, Coach Fitz had an opportunity to be a, a GA there, so. You know, he said, hey, come out, try it out, see if you want to get into coaching. And uh, so it was great, alma mater, very familiar with the staff and coaches there and 
how they want to run um, the the team, uh, how Coach Fitz runs the, runs the team. So first week, pretty much within the first three days, really, I knew this is exactly what I wanted to do. Loved every minute of it. You know, you kind of see behind the curtain a little bit on how what the coaches have to go through to get ready for just a practice, scripting and carding and all the things that put together the pl practice plans and the practice installs. And for me as a player, like being the third, second and third quarterback for most of my career, all of my career, like that was something that was um, easy for me. Like that, I had to do those type of things, kind of be in the back, um, back of the room, behind the curtain, kind of watching and trying to help out anywhere I can to, to stick on the team. So when I got into coaching, it was like, this is awesome. This is fun. This is what I love to do. So I think that's where I really set myself up for this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, you know, now, you know, having the opportunity to be with Coach Fitz at my alma mater, then have an opportunity to come back with Coach Reed and, and be with his staff, who, had, again, had a lot of familiarity with and with the offense. That was an awesome experience and one that, you know, I'm forever grateful for. Like, when, when it comes to the challenge, like, did you see some pass protections of, uh, What's that? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. We'll take both. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dion. When it comes to the challenges of facing Wink's defense, we've heard from the players and mm -hmm. practice all the time, but when you get in a situation where you guys start getting competitive, you're not necessarily calling plays against what you're anticipating from Wink. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you hit a screen like that on Friday night, it, it's almost like, you know, do you look at it and say, I got, I got, you know, we, we'd use more of that if, you know, <laughs> if we're facing this defense. Yeah, and how much is it frustrating as you're trying to get things done? Yeah, well, you know, again, we're putting in our offense. We're trying to follow the, um, the practice plan that we had and that we've set all the way in June. And, um, you know, th th those things are going to happen. And that's why, that's why Wink's who he is, right? It, he brings uh, a lot of pressure and he's multiple in, in those type of ways. So that's been a good challenge for our offense. But again, you know, I think th there's plays that we've had throughout the um, throughout training camp, and then in that scrimmage, that, yeah, they, a couple of plays look pretty good. We got them on one of them. They got us on one. That's part of the competing. And so I, that's what I love about this team right now is everyone's competing. Everyone's trying to get better. And yeah, we might get you one time. They might get us one time. But we're all on the same team. We're all working towards the same goal. Kind of building out that, Mike. Did you see some pass protection issues the other night in that scrimmage that concerned you? Number one, and like, how would you evaluate the state of your offensive line uh, yeah. overall at this point? I, I think you're. I think um, the the offensive line. Like one goal we have for them is setting the depth and width of the pocket. And I thought they did that overall. There was a couple miscommunications. That I think we can clean up. Um, and again, because Wink's multiple, and that's that's the that's the best thing. That's our best challenge that we've had. Um, all training camp was going up against Wigan. That's been a great test for not only the communication, the quarterback and offensive line, but with our running backs, with our tight ends involved in protections. Like that's been an awesome challenge for us. And really that's, that's helped us. And even though it might not be um, exactly clean every single time, that's going to help us down the road in the long term, which is what I'm really excited about. So I think, you know, you got to, you have to be able to evaluate um, the scheme, the integrity of the scheme and the protection and make sure that we're not um, just completely disregarding that part. So we, we go back as coaches and we look at that and we make sure we can have rules and answers for our guys so that if those things pop up, you know, we can go and execute.